This is Hollywood. And there's not a place in the world that's like it. Hey, it's Hollywood Joe, and I want to welcome you to the program. Now, if this is the first time that you've tuned into me, well, all right, I'll forgive you this time, but not again. You better stay the whole program, and you better tune in next week, all right? We got some marvelous, marvelous stuff to show you. Now, the first place, Blessed Sacrament Church. 100 years old this year. As a matter of fact, they're celebrating their centennial as we speak. Now, it's very interesting. The uh, Methodist Church on Gower, the Presbyterian Church on Franklin and Highland, and the Blessed Sacrament Church are all celebrating their centennial birthdays. This is magnificent. A hundred years ago, you know, Hollywood only was settled back in 1890, 1895. These three churches sprung up not only have they sprung up, but they've thrived. And this, this particular church, well, it has some tie in to Hollywood. You see, this church was where the first Screen Actors Guild meeting took place. Some disgruntled actors, some disgruntled writers got together, were complaining about how the producers treated them. They signed a petition, turned it over to the producers, that was the beginning of the Screen Actors Guild right here. Well, there it is, the Hollywood sign. Now, it used to say Hollywood Land, and it used to be a developer's advertisement to get people to buy property up here in, uh, up here in Hollywood. In 1943, they took off the land, and uh, ever since then, it's been to Hollywood. It fell into disrepair sometime in the early 90s and uh, a couple of Hollywood celebrities got together and pulled their money and uh, put the shape uh, back into the sign and there it is today. And there's a, uh, there's a fun to, to keep it painted and to keep it looking good. You know, a very strange thing happened here at this sign in the year 1933. There was a young lady by the name of Peg Entwistle. And that H up there that you're looking at, that H, on a spring night in 1933, she climbed to the top of it and jumped to her death. She was an actress and suffered from depression and that particular night, she told her dad that she was just going out for a walk. Well, she went out for a walk, all right. She walked all the way up here and you can see that's pretty rough terrain all the way up to that Hollywood sign. Climbed that big 50 foot H and said the last words of her life and jumped. And underneath it, she left her coat and her purse very tidily folded up. And at home, she left a, uh, she left a suicide note. And if I can, I'd like to read it to you. It said, I'm afraid I am a coward and I am sorry for everything. If I had done this a long time ago, it would have saved a lot of pain. And the irony of it is, she was an actress and, and the reason why she was depressed was, was because she, she wasn't getting any work. But the very next day, a letter came in the mail. There were, weren't very many phones in those days. A letter came in the mail from the Beverly Hills Playhouse, which was a big deal in those days, and uh, asking her, to play uh, the star in its next production. And that production, ironically, was about a young woman who, uh, who commits suicide. But, you know, if she'd hung around another day, she, uh, she would have, uh, well, who knows. Even though she's gone, she's not really gone. Now, there's a lot of forest rangers up here. This is a, uh, this is a national park. And the forest rangers say that about dusk, on a lot of evenings, in the springtime, like it is now, that they see a vision of Peg up and around the sign and walking these hills that our camera is looking at. And they say that at the same time when they see her, 
there's this pungent smell of gardenia. Gardenia. This pungent smell of gardenia. I don't want to scare anybody, but I think I'm smelling it now. Anyway, if you're there, Peg, God bless you, and I hope you're at rest. Peg, Earn Twistle, and the Hollywood sign. And you know, that wasn't even a real name. Her real last name was Melison or something beautiful like that. In Twistle, stage name. Peg, stage name. But at death, and jumping off that sign, that was real. That's the last one that uh, ever committed suicide on the Hollywood sign. And now they have a, uh, a fence up around it and a uh, uh, camera, motion camera, so that if you get close, they buzz you in the helicopter and then they arrest you and take you to jail. So as much as I'd like to take you a little closer, take my word for it. Those letters are 50 feet high. It does indeed say Hollywood. And we're on our way to see some other sites. Hollywood, California, ladies and gentlemen. Hollywood, California. You gotta love it. <laughs> so I think I was lucky that I, I fell into what I wanted to do. Oh, hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey. Where have you been? I lost my cat. Oh, that's not right. Yeah, so I made this cat magnet to try and get him back. Cool. Does it work? Kind of. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but that's not my cat. Gotta keep working on it. See ya. See ya. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Get started on your own inventions or just play some games at inventnow.org. this hard. Graduating can be even harder. But you can help Jose and the students in your community make it through by visiting BoostUp.org. Scott Wilson. The word on the street is that Scott Wilson is a tough guy. Not a tough guy, but he's a tough actor. And then I mean that, that uh, he's a guy with principles. That there were a number of films that you would offer good money for, but that you turned down out of principle. I, 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 that's interesting to hear that. Really? <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't view it that way myself as me being tough or anything. I, I have passed on some work, uh, but at the same time, I've done, I've done some work. I've, I've worked, you know, I've worked a lot. Where were you born, and what was it that made you uh, get into this, uh, this acting in the first place? Uh, well, I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. I hitchhiked out here when I was 19. Wow. Uh, I got drunk and ended up in an acting class. That's the short version. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth, huh? Yeah. Yeah. 
And I, I uh, went back the next week to apologize to the teacher. He says, I don't know what your problem is. Don't come back to my class drunk. So I went back the next week to apologize to him. And he gave me a monologue to do from Eugene O'Neill One Act called A Long Voyage Home. And I went back the next week and did it. And I said, this is it. This is what I want. So I think I was lucky that I, I fell into what I wanted to do, you know, with my life. So yeah. I, I pursued it from that point on. And had you done any acting at all beforehand? No. Yeah. No. And so you didn't go to the university? You didn't do uh, no. anything? I was, I was playing basketball at a little school called Southern Tech. Huh. And I got hepatitis and they said I couldn't play ball anymore. And if I had a relapse, it would be fatal. So I, when I was up to it, I hitchhiked out here. I said, well, I want to see some of the world. Wow. Wow. And I have. When I, when I first started acting, I just wanted to learn how to act. Yeah. There's a business side to the, to the, <laughs> to the it's yeah. called show business. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't pay attention to the business side of the business. So I let a lot of things got away from me that I could have handled differently if I'd been a little more yeah. aware. But you're always, at least most actors, are always looking for work. Yeah. No matter how recognizable That's right. your, your name is. Yeah. Did, uh, did the heat of the night, uh, Rod Steiger, God, you know, is my, uh, my idol from when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, what was it like meeting this man and, and working with, uh, with Rod Steiger? Ah, well, I mean... For a young actor to all of a sudden be on, on uh, working with, with Steiger and with Sidney Poitier, uh, it was, it was uh, you know, I was a little awed by it. And I, I said, I can't talk to them. If I do, then they'll know how scared I am. <laughs> uh, uh. So, so uh, it was it was really both of them really wonderful with with me with you know working with a young actor and they both uh, both Rod and Sidney and later I understand that Sidney and uh, Quincy Jones who did the score on that film were talking to Richard Brooks about uh, in Cold Blood about me being in in Cold Blood and saying that I should be you know I should be doing it and Norman Jewison the director of the film allowed Brooks to look at the dailies, which was pretty rare in those days. Maybe it still is, I don't know. But, wow. but that was how I got up for In Cold Blood. So that was directly, in the heat of the night, directly responsible for getting you that. Right. Uh, my goodness, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. golly, Scott, here you are. You're, you're in town for five years. This is your second movie. Both of them mainstream big Big time films. I mean, you're you're Critical, right. You're right in the yeah. belly uh, of, yeah, of the. Yeah. How did you handle the fame? Did it go to your head? I don't think it did. I, first place, they didn't pay me enough money for it to go to my head. <laughs> 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 okay. my, my life didn't change all that much. Yeah. I mean, it was it was. Uh, you know, they were my first roles. I would have paid to do them, but but. Yeah. Uh, and, and what they did was give me a career. Hmm. You know, they gave me a way of making a living, those, those first two roles. And, and I've made a living as an actor since then. Huh. You know, I, I, I kind of, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I was able to make a living as long as I have as by being an actor. Hmm. Uh, but that, that's, it, they, were, they were wonderful films. They, they both came out in 1967. Uh, and uh, in the Heat of the Night won, I don't know, a lot of Academy Awards. It was nominated for a lot and it won. There are roles that, you know, every acting role, I'm sure, that we, we enjoy them. But some acting roles transcend. Gosh, I, you're, you're right. Every role does, does I think, makes you grow as a, as a person. You know, every role you play, I think, yeah. I think you, you learn something more about human nature and certainly about yourself. Yeah. There is a cult following that loves you. I've been very lucky with the people that I've worked with. 
I've worked with some really creative people, very talented people, both directors and actors. I mean, I've been very fortunate with the, with the people I've worked with, and I knew it when I first started. I said, I'm lucky. <laughs> In Hollywood, you can't throw a stone without hitting an actor, okay? Uh, hello. Uh, yes. Can I ask a few questions about the apartment on Park Street? What was your name? My name. Uh, my name is Juan Hernandez. It's been rented. Oh, it's gone. Hello. My name is Sanjay Kumar. I am calling about the apartment on Park Street. It's not available. Not available. Hello. My name is Tyrone Washington. I'm calling about the apartment on Park Street. Just been rented. Hello, I am Chen Ling. My name is Khalid Bin Ali. I'm Tuan Vo. Hello, my name is Moshe Goldberg. I use a wheelchair. It's gone. Not available. All right. Thank you. Yes, hello, my name is Graham Wellington. I'm calling about the apartment for rent on Park Street. Is that still available? Yes, it is. What oh, is? Yes. Really? Housing discrimination is illegal. If you think you've been a victim because of your race, color, national origin, sex, religion, disability, or family status, call us. Fair housing. It's not an option. It's the law. Life's this hard, graduating can be even harder. But you can help Ativa and the students in your community make it through by visiting boostup.org. The odds of a child becoming a professional golfer? One in 140,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, one in 150. You know the odds of autism. Now learn the signs. Go to autismspeaks.org. this guy I mean I, 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 I don't know I mean he's got a nice stool here to hang out on he's got uh, he's guarded by owls uh, very nice so I thought we'd go in here to ask now see in Hollywood in a lot of places you don't want to ask unless you absolutely have to because then the next question is what are you doing and then the next question after that is, do you have a permit? So, we'll see what we can do. The crossroads of the world, and back in the day, the crossroads of the world was literally the crossroads of the world. This is sunset, just down the street is Highland. It's right in the middle of the mix here in Hollywood. Now. For years and years, the lady who built this place, and it is obvious, she tried as best she could to make it look like a ship, what with the uh, life preservers and the, uh, the decks, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the question is, why did she try to make it look like a ship? The answer is, nobody knows. I guess she just had kind of a, a whimsical thing about ships, and... She had a few bucks, and she said, hey, I can do just whatever in the heck I please. So here it is, crossroads of the world. Looks like a ship on purpose. Now, there, if you notice, and, and here I'm doing my Hewell Hauser again because I love architecture. But there's supposed to be four different architectural structures here. You got your Turkish. You got your Mexican. You got your European. And the other one is Middle Eastern. Back in the day, this used to be bustling. It was built in 1936. And it has unique little restaurants and, 
and offices and people used to gather here, read the paper and talk about show business. Now, unfortunately, there's not even a coffee shop here. And to say in this place with about 12 buildings, 12 businesses, not one of them is a coffee shop. It's really saying something. So anyway, you're Turkish, New England, you're, you're French, you're Mexican. It's all here. It's all here. But you know what? If you're out, you're in Hollywood, come on down here. It's certainly, uh, it's certainly worth a, uh, a few minutes to check the place out. Now, there's supposed to be a hidden well back in the back here someplace. I've lived in Hollywood a long time. I've never seen it. But Todd and I are going to go back. We're going to see if we can find this hidden well. Stick with us. Come on. All right. This is the, uh, the wishing well that uh, I was bragging about that was all the, all the rage back in 1936. And, well, as you can see, it's uh, lost just a little bit of its luster. Here we have uh, some dragons here. Cooking, I mean, the art. Well, we also got some cobwebs cooking. They say that they used to make about $600 a month here, which I don't know, at the end of the year, that's seven or $8,000. Well, all right, six or $7,000. But back in the 40s, that was quite a bit of change, literally. And they gave that money to uh, the needy. So this uh, wishing well certainly. Uh, uh, made some people's wishes come true. I'll tell you something now. We are in Hollywood. We are between Sunset Boulevard and Hollywood Boulevard. And that these amazing cottages still survive here today is marvelous. Anything that stays longer than 30 years in Hollywood, hey, it's an antique. It's an historical monument. Trust me on that. Look at that with, this, with that with that gable going up there. That's that's quite marvelous. Well, all right. I'm not an expert on this, but I think you can you can trust me on this one. This is uh, this is the Turkish uh, this is the Turkish look back here. And you know what? I think this might be the real wishing well that they were talking about. Huh? Got the little bell on top. It's a real well down there, although there's no more money. All right, well, you know, that's going to be up to the historians because there's one there, there's one here. But I don't know. That looks, that, this looks more like a, a well well, if you, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. Uh, now, I, I, I want to be real quiet here, but in Hollywood, you can't throw a stone without hitting an actor, okay? I mean, I'm sorry, we are everywhere. But uh, there must be some auditioning going here because this uh, young man is going over his script, uh, studying his lines, and about to go in there and give an audition. Any given place in Hollywood, this is happening, what, about 500 times right now, and that is without an exaggeration. Yeah. Okay, oh, he's next. He's about ready to go in. Okay, there he goes. Break a leg! A lot of people, including myself, never knew where break a leg came from. We knew that it was pre-Shakespearean. Break a leg. What the heck does that mean? You know, of course it means good luck to the actor, but why? Yes, sir. Really? I'm very sorry. You I, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I'm very sorry, sir. Yeah. Uh, my name's Joe Estevez. I'm sorry. It's for my show called Hollywood Joe. I'm sorry, Lacrest. Mr. Lacrest, my apologies. Okay. Uh, so uh, that was uh, Mr. Lacrest. And Mr. Lacrest uh, reamed us pretty good there about shooting on his property and said that, well, you should ask permission first. And he's absolutely right. As I said before, the only problem with asking for permission is you never get it. So get your shot. Hopefully you get out before the Mr. Caretzes of the world show up. But anyway, so when the actors are taking their bow, 
if the audience is enthused and they're up out of the seats and they're roaring, they curtsy to the audience. They say, thank you. That is breaking the leg. Curtsy. So this is a little village, a little village that they build up for crossroads of the world. Now, if you're just a pedestrian or you're walking by Hollywood Boulevard or going down Sunset Boulevard, you're not going to see this. Now, I hate to tell you this, L.A. people, Hollywood people, you're actually going to have to get out of your car. I know, I know, it's tough. I don't like to do it myself. But if you get out of your car, come check this out. It's a marvelous oasis right in the middle of Hollywood. Well, Joe! <laughs> <laughs>